You ready to look at God's Word today? We're going to be looking at 1 John 4. But before we do, let's bow in a word of prayer. Oh, gracious and oh, glorious Father. You give us so much, and we just thank you for that. Your name is great, oh God. You are the Yahweh of heaven. You are the true and living God, O oh, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. And then Jesus, after three days, of, he rose over death in victory and were risen from the grave. Oh, Lord, we can never thank you enough for the sacrifice you did for us, Jesus. And Heavenly Father, I just thank you. You loved us so much, you sent your Son. We can never thank you enough. I want to pray for those who are lost. I pray on this day that people who are lost can find you, Lord, and turn their lives to a life and the, true, the truth of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, I just pray for the, those people. Now, Lord, as we look at your word in 1 John 4, Please guide us how to test for spirits that aren't spirits of you, Lord. May we only follow the one spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit. May it guide us, the Spirit of Jesus. In Jesus' blessed, oh Lord, one more thing, just fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill me, talk through me, Lord. Use me, guide me as we look at this passage. In Jesus' blessed name, I pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to be looking at, as I said earlier, at 1 John 4. 1 John 4. I'm going to read through it, and then we'll go back and look at it. This is a, chest, a chapter on testing spirits and on love. <clears throat> Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard, that it is coming, and now it is already in the world. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak as from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 
No one has beheld God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfect, perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he, he has given us of his spirit. And we have beheld and bear witness that the Father has sent the Son of the Savior of, to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this love is perfected with us that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Amen. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God, should love his brother also. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Let's um, go back to the verse 1 of First John 4. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. So we aren't supposed to believe every spirit. Everything that comes upon us, we aren't supposed to believe everything. We have to test things. And I'm talking about spiritual spirits. To see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world so there's many false prophets out here in the world and and they, they teach false things and we have to look out for that you know I don't attack schools and stuff but sometimes it could be a teacher that's the false prophet they could be saying one thing and, and they could falsely be teaching you. So you have to be aware of false prophets. And the only way to test a false prophet is with this book. That's one way to test them. Is test, test them by if they believe in this book. If they believe, see what they truly believe. We have to test them and, and, and false spirits. By this you know the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. So if, if a spirit says, I believe Jesus Christ lived in the flesh and also rose from the dead, they come from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus, it's not from God. So if it doesn't if, if someone, a human, the spirits talk through people, the whole, the Satan controls or, or tries to guide us wrongly, and, and, and that's where false spirits come from, is Satan. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, Satan, which you have heard that it is coming. And it says it's coming from now. Now it is already in the world. So Satan's in the world. We got to be aware of Satan's temptations. We got to be aware of Satan's false spirits, and, and, and I follow some false spirits, and it's called alcohol. But I'm an alcoholic. I still believe in the disease concept that I have the disease alcoholism, or I did until Jesus healed me from that. Oh, praise you, Lord, praise you. And, but, but. And I was a drug addict, and he healed me from that, from doing chemicals. And then it goes on in verse 4. You are from God, little children, 
and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So greater is the Holy Spirit than Satan, than the spirit in the world, which is Satan. So greater is, the Holy Spirit's greater. Satan's going to find his end when the end times come. But Satan's here and out here trying to keep people from believing in Jesus Christ. So we have to beware of that. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. So if someone doesn't listen to you, they aren't from God. And if, but if they do listen to you about when you're talking about Jesus Christ and God, they are from God. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So we know the spirit of truth is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and, and our Heavenly Father. And the, the spirit of error is Satan. And so we gotta, we got to get this pounded into our little brains every day. That, that Satan's out there and he's going to attack us. And, we, and there's one way to get rid of Satan, and that's to go to God and say, In the name of Jesus Christ, Satan be gone. And that's how you can get Satan's temptations away from you. Go to God. Don't go to the temptation. Beloved, let us love... One, this is verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. So... Only true love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So, so if you know what true love is, you know God. By this the love of God was manifested in us. That God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that he may live through him so that we may might live through him. So God sent his only son, his only begotten son, to be a sacrifice for us. And this, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the pro... pro for our sins so so here God God chooses us you know that we love God it's not that we love God it's that God loves us he sent his son to be a sacrifice on the cross for you and for me I know the terrible sins I've done in my life and he pulled me out of that, but Jesus did it on the cross. We always have to remember the cross. We have to go back to the cross. Jesus suffered and died on the cross as a sacrificial lamb for you and me. And, you know, sometimes I, it makes me want to cry. I, I'm, I was, I'm still a sinner. I'm still a man. I sin sometimes still. But, I, but but in my past, I sin all the time. And I feel terrible that Jesus had to die on the cross for me. And, and, and for, I don't want to go into the sins I've done. That's not good. I li that's behind me because God has left it behind me. Okay. Verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So if God loved us so much, he sent us sent it down the cross, we need to love each other. Mostly when we're fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. I, I don't want to talk about people on their backs, I, I, I've heard, but in churches I've heard people complaining and griping about each other. If you have a gripe with someone, go talk to them about it. Don't gossip. You know, gossip, gossiping in the church is probably one of the greatest sins of people in the church. And judging. 
Verse 12. Now one, now one has beheld God. At, no one has beheld God at any time. No one has seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. So God perfects his love through us when we love one another. So we're perfecting God's love. What? A, it just it, it's an awesome thing, isn't it? God's using us to perfect his love. It's baffling sometimes. In verse 13, But this we know that we abide in him and he is in, in us because he has given us his spirit. So we know he abides in us because once we become true believers in Jesus Christ and accept him and accept Jesus in there to our lives, the Holy Spirit comes within us. And it's an amazing thing. I, I, if you aren't a believer, I can't explain what that is because it only happens to you when you truly believe. And, and so the Spirit abides in us. So we have the Spirit and God's love within us. That's how we can love for God. We're God's love representatives, this is sort of saying. And we have beheld and bear witness that the, fa oh, the Father has sent the Son to be a Savior of the world. So we believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Him dying on the cross and being a human sacrifice and, and a sacrificial lamb sacrifice because he was a perfect human being without sin. He died on the cross for you and me. It's just, it's just, it, it gets to me sometimes. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him. So right here it says, if you believe it, confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God will abide in you. And he in God, so he will abide in us. And we have come to know and have believed the love, verse 16, the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So God abides in us because he loves us. You know, he, and we can show, and we abide in him with love for God. So it goes both ways. We have to love God, too. Don't for, ever forget that. That's our first love, is God. Not things in the world. Not what Satan's tempting us to do. Not the Nebraska Cornhuskers who play about a mile down the road here. They aren't God. It's just a game. When I was leading music at another church about a mile, half, two miles from here, after the Huskers would lose, it, it, I mean, it's, you walk over a bridge and you're at the stadium, so, where this church was, and, and I used to say, it's just a game. Was I upset the Huskers lost? Yeah. But, it's just a game. Well, this is life. And life is real and we need to show God God's love can be shown through us we have to our first love can't be any should not be anything but God and Jesus Christ but this love is perfected with us that we may And then again, it says, God abides in us says, through the Holy Spirit. Verse 17, by this love is perfected with us that we may have confidence in the day of judgment so that we will be confident. When God's judging us, we'll be confident because we know that, that he forgave us of our sins and we're saved. That's a, we'll, we'll have confidence because as he is, so also are we in the world. So God was is in the world, and Jesus was in the world, but if we truly believe in him, we'll have confidence. Let me stress that again. 
we will be confident. I've had I, I've worked with people that that were worried. Am I? I don't know. Am I really going to have? Am I? Am I worthy? No, no one's worthy. You know, but we can we can start living without sin when we start following Jesus Christ, and we can be confident on the day of judgment when when we go before the throne that we will be saved it's a beautiful thing here there verse 18 there is no fear in love so love doesn't have fear but perfect love casts out fear so perfect love casts out fear we're still supposed to fear God but we're but we love him so it's a different kind of fear than it's talking about here I think because fear involves punishment and the one who fears is not perfected in love so we need to be perfected in love we need not to fear things we need not to um, you know when you lay your head down in bed you don't need to fear that someone's going to break in your door God's there to protect you and if you die who then you get to go to heaven so you, you know I don't want to be shot in my home. That would be a terrible thing. But but what I'm saying is the love of God protects us. We love because, the lo because he loved us. I love that verse. Let me repeat that. Verse 19. We love. We, we are able to have true love because he first loved us. Because God loved us first, we can know how to love. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. He doesn't love God. Because he, because he hates his brother, you're supposed to love your brother. For the one who does not love his brother, in verse 20, he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. How can you... If you can't love your brother that you can see, how can you love God that you can't see? Think about that. Really think about that. You need to love one another. Is your brother going to do bad things to you? And I'm talking not, not your, well, it could be your, your um, biological brother, but I'm just talking about your brothers in Christ and your brother's fellow man on this earth. That, that if you don't love people and, and sisters too if you don't love each other you haven't seen God just think about it and this commandment we have from him this is the commandment that the one who loves God so if we love God should love his brother also that's a commandment, and that's and that's what God's telling us in this passage. We need to love one another. We need to show God's love. He abides in us. We can use that the Holy Spirit to love others and to care for others and to pray with others. And this this was a wonderful passage. We have to look out for false prophets and false teachings. And we have to follow our brother. And we have to love our brother. Don't always follow them if they're, if they're sinful. But um, we need to love our brother and sisters. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father, you just give us this, this passage that it starts out talking about false teachings and false prophets that we're going to have to face in our lives and it's going to tempt us to follow in other ways but if we truly have what it talks about at the end of the chapter the love of God in us and the Holy Spirit we will fight off those temptations of false prophets and false teachings and, and, and just may Lord may you touch us with this passage may we show love for our brothers not just because sometimes 
people get to be even in churches, they even get clicky, mostly in the bigger churches. And it just, as a pastor, it gets to me sometimes. But Lord, may we not judge, but may we love. May we not gossip about, but may we show our love towards other people. I thank you for all you do for us, Lord. Now, now just this week, may we learn from this passage to love our brothers. And I just thank you for everything you do for us, Lord. I just thank you for all the blessings and love that you've shown towards us and have left the helper, the Holy Spirit, to guide us and protect us. In Jesus' ever-loving and precious, precious, precious name, amen. Folks, go out and love your fellow brother this week. Thanks for listening.